Father, night, grant us mercy in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray, O Lord Almighty, every word that we are going to hear tonight, let it be an addition to the one you have already sent to our lives. Let it bring transformation. Let it bring renewal of mind, renewal of soul, and of our body. Let there be healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we put our hands together? Let us have our seat. Praise the Lord. Uh, tonight is a different night because uh, I'll be teaching. So I want us to pay attention because uh, one thing that I've noticed in in Christianity is that <laughs> maybe our pastors or uh, the people that actually preach the gospel to us, the most important thing they normally preach to us is the benefit of serving God. Uh, probably because we have been compelled to go out and so not minding the price we're going to pay. Not minding the assignment or responsibility that is going to be bestowed on us being a Christian. So a lot of time, the reason why you find out that most Christians have this challenge of not being able to reach God is as a result of the fact that we only know God as a God answer prayer, which is good. Praise the Lord. And he will continue to answer our prayers. So we must also know that this God, there are some things that we are being compelled to know when it has to quit our salvation. And one of such tonight but the grace preacher majority, I will not say all of them as it's no longer necessary. So tonight I'll be speaking to us on a message entitled Jesus' commandment. We all understand that commandment has to do with the Old Testament before Jesus came. A lot of people never find it or deem it fit to find out if there are commandments Jesus has given to us. So that is why I, I said that <laughs> we are focused on the on the you know the, the 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 benefits of serving God. So once you just once you you know do some certain things, then you, know, you don't need to even do some certain things. That's the way we. Preach. I'm sure that one way or the other, we are find ourselves right in such a where. We let people know that, oh, don't worry. It's just about you coming to Christ. By tomorrow morning, you see, things will start working for you. And there will be answer everywhere and all that. There's no bad. But I've come to let you know that. Have commandments. Right? So, I will not go straight to commandments, but I will first of all talk about. Can I have this mic? I think, right? Maybe the battery or something. Uh, what's happening? All right. So, I will first of all talk about the benefit of keeping his commandments. I will just, you know, go through it. And uh, I believe God is going to help us in Jesus' name. So, let's talk about the benefit of keeping 
this commandment first. So maybe later we can now find out what are the you know uh, those commandments. Praise the Lord. So number one, let's open to John 15. We're gonna majority of them are in John 15. All right. So let's just open to John 15, chapter 10 first. Chapter 10. John chapter 15, verse 10. All right. So he said, if what? I'm sure this is not Old Testament now. Is that correct? It's not Old Testament. This is New Testament. So if you keep what? Is it commandment or commandments? So it means there are many, right? All right. So what's the first benefit? You will what? Okay, so there is an automatic love of Christ for you. So you can write it as number one. Automatic love from him. Number two. Verse 14. Verse 14. All right. Let's let's read it also. So you become his friend. Number two. Benefit. You become his friend. Let's look at verse seven. Verse seven of that same place. You become his friend. How many of us want to become friend of Jesus? See, it's all of us. But let me tell somebody there is a condition. Ah, it's not. It's not. <laughs> okay, let's look at the third one. Verse 7. Can we read it together? Okay. And it shall be done for you. So it means that when you keep his commandment, it guarantee answers to prayer. Answers to prayers. Answers to prayers. Can we go to verse 4 of that same place? Answers to prayer. Verse 4. Let's read verse 4. Abide in me and I in you as the word cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine. Neither can you unless you what? You abide in me. So it means that for your life to bear fruit, you need to abide in Christ. To abide in him. All right. Let me just give us the other one. So maybe later if I have enough time, I'll show the scripture. Number five, it guarantees divine presence. Automatic divine presence. Wherever you go, the host of heaven will be drawn towards you. Divine presence. Number six, it guarantees divine protection. Simply because you are keeping his commandments. Number seven, it guarantees peace. There will be peace in your life. There is nothing that will move you. Nothing. Praise the Lord. All right, peace. Number eight, it becomes the source of abundance for you. Source of help. Source of joy. Source of increase in your life when you keep his commandment. Number nine, it will be hard for you to lose any battle. Very hard. Very hard. It will be very hard. Can I give us two more? It guarantees. Fulfillment of purpose in life. 
guarantee fulfillment of purpose or vision or dreams in life. Your dreams will just come true without stress when you keep his commandment. And let me just say this before we now go straight to the, the commandments. You won't have been able to, you know, uh, unnest together. Right. I may not be able to give us all of it, but the few ones that have been able to gather together, then you are autom you will automatically eat sin. When you keep God's commandment, you will automatically what? Eat sin. So it's not a question of ah, I'm trying to I'm trying my best. So what is this commandment that I'm talking about? What is commandment? Don't forget we're in Bible study. What is commandment? You know, the way, the way, the, the way it is called, it, 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 it can bring fear to us. Is that correct? The way it is mentioned. Eight hey, commandment. Ah, ten commandment. Hundred commandment. So it, it, it can bring fear. It can breed fear in our heart. And make us feel like, is it possible? So let me just give us a few definitions of commandments. Number one, it is Jesus' mandate for you. Jesus' mandate. Jesus' mandate for you. For you. Number two, it is responsibility bestowed on you by Jesus. Responsibility bestowed on you by Jesus. Or it is the charge. The charge. Let it be low like that. Yeah, it's okay like that. There's a charge, the charge, the charge, the charge. Thank you, Jesus. Can we look at John chapter 14, verse 15? John chapter 14, and verse 15. Thank you, Jesus. John chapter 14, and verse 15. All right. Can we read it together? Now, can I ask a question? The question I want to ask tonight, if you really want to find out the responsibility Jesus is placing on you, the question is this, and let me ask anybody that is close to you, or you can walk up to two or three people, ask them, do you love Jesus? That's, that's, it's a very simple question, but it is the main question. It is the what? The main question. The reason why you have come to the Christian family. If anything you are doing is not built on love or on your love for him. Even in heaven, they, they can't even trace, they won't be able to trace our record. So everything you are going to do as a must be built on love. And the love for who now? For Jesus. If you love me, keep my commandment. Let me let's quickly check first John chapter 5, verse 1 to 3. First John chapter 5, verse 1 to 3. Don't forget, I said I'm teaching tonight, so I'm sorry if I'm just quoting scripture. So I pray that the Lord will help our understanding in Jesus' name. Can we just read it? Say, whosoever that what? I'm not hearing our voice. Okay? Who loves him? Who begot also love him? Who is begotten of him? So he meaning he's talking about Jesus and God, right? And his father. Alright, so let's fast forward to now. By this we know that what? We love the children of God when we what? 
when we love God and keep his commandment, when we love God, it, we are not talking Old Testament. This is not, I have not even gone to Old Testament. When you love God, you keep what? His commandment. So, let's, let's read verse 3 now. For this is what? You see, he's, he's taking you back again to that commandment. For this is what? The love of God that what? We keep is what? Is it commandment or commandments? Alright. And what? His commandment are not bodies. His commandment are not bodies. So anytime you see the spiritual things, are you hearing me? Anytime you see that spiritual things now becoming a burden to you. Anytime going to church is becoming burden. Prayer is becoming burden. Evangelism is becoming a burden. Giving to the kingdom is becoming a burden to you. You are, see, you need to go back to your first love, which is love for Christ. Praise the Lord. It means that his love is no longer in you. Anytime you are now seeing it that it is you. Ah, I'm sacrificing too much. Ah, this prayer is too much. Ah, I cannot be reading the Bible too much. Ah, this one. Just know that the question of love in your life needs to be answered. I don't know whether what I'm saying to you have any understanding at all. Love for God. All right. We all understand that we are in the dispensation of grace, right? Grace has covered everything. Is that correct? So it means that if I deliberately steal somebody's or if I deliberately collected somebody's wife, grace, will, grace can also cover for it, David. No, let's talk now. Or I steal somebody's thing. Grace should cover it. Huh? So it means if I if I deliberately lie, or even if I'm not deliberately lying, or I'm just doing something that I know that this thing, even your conscience, without nobody telling you that it's a commandment, your conscience is judging you. Grace can cover up for that one too, right? Praise the Lord. May God help us in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. So, we should not misunderstand. Now, my own understanding of grace. I want you to listen to this. Just listen. I'm saying this for the first time so that you can... You can my spirit is bearing me witness. Are you listening to me? Please take this from me. My own understanding of grace is that... When you love God, He will give you a supernatural strength to be able to overcome and to be able to keep those commandments. That is my own definition of grace. There are things I thought I will never be able to do. When I when I when God called me to ministry, I said, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, 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 there is no way I can do it. I will mess up in this area. But nine years counting is grace sufficient. My prayer for you in the, in the name of Jesus, every area you have been struggling because of your special love for God, that special grace will be given to you tonight in the name of Jesus so he says shall we continue in sin what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that we will have multiplication of grace verse 2 said God he said certainly not he said how shall we 
who died to sin live any longer in it. Now, let me tell you something. When you fall in love with God, what it means automatically is that you will hate sin. Because you want to, at every point in your life, you want to please God. At every point, when they are praying, other people may be weak. You yourself, you know you are weak. But because of that law, you are still putting more pressure. Oh, they are singing. Even the song they are singing, you know, because of that love, you are still putting more power. They call for giving. You know that this is, ah. Can I tell you something? This is our church. There are people that love God. It's just these three days that I know. As we're about to do this work, eh, some people went and borrowed money. That's love. That is love. Stop deceiving yourself. When you see anyone who is in love with God, it is sin will be far from their tabernacle. I pray may God give you that grace in Jesus' name. Now, why are we talking about commandment? Is it that pastor has come here to, please put for me Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Is it that pastor is coming to come and condemn you? Ah, look at you. Because you can't do this, before you can't do this, because you can't do that, then that means, no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. And the, the, the commandment we are talking about is not in flesh. You can't keep the commandment of God in flesh. You can't do it in flesh. You must be a spirit person. For you to be able to keep the commandment of God, you must be a spirit person. Look at it. He said, there is therefore now, not tomorrow, not yesterday, there is therefore now, no what? Condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to what? According to the flesh. Where your flesh is, where your flesh, where you are hearing your flesh, you can't do the things of the spirit. You will think it's not possible. How am I going to come? How can I do this? How will this thing happen? I am telling you, if you are working in the spirit, it will happen. How? We have limited ourselves in God as a result of the fact that we have limited the grace that God has given to us to just the physical, our physical nature, our flesh. It's all about the flesh. It's about the spirit. Let me tell somebody it's about your spirit. Let me just run through some of those commandments what are the commandments of jesus number one number one commandment of jesus is we are commanded to love god with all our heart with all our soul with all our mind we are commanded to love god matthew chapter 22 verse 36 to 40 we are commanded we are commanded see can i tell you why you are thinking about your problem every time can i tell you it's because you don't love god if you love god you will know that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you ask or think people have been limited they have limited their destiny as a result of the fact that they believe so much in the natural, neglecting the supernatural. Can we read it? Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? In the law. Yeah, we are not in Old Testament. Too. New Testament. It's to Jesus they are talking to here. Who is talking there? And Jesus said, you shall walk. Am I, sure I'm, am I sure I'm talking to a Christian here? You share what? With what? With all your heart. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you what that place means? With all. Huh? Can I tell you what it means? You can love God 
by prayer and you can eat God by discipline. You can love God by singing, but you can eat God by giving. With all Jesus said in John 20, 12 verse 24 he said unless a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die if you don't die to self self will take you down this flesh unless a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die can you imagine what he said he said it remains a low but if it dies, meaning that you can be on ground and you assume that you are dying, you are, you are not. You are not dying to flesh. Little things, they move you. Huh? Little things. Some of us, as, as small as greeting, still move us. Somebody didn't greet you. You are still moved. It means that you can't love God with all. With all. With all. You have to be dead to flesh. Let me tell somebody be prepared to flesh. Number two. I don't know how many I'm going to give us, but I will just try my best. Do to order what you want order to do to you. Do to what? What you want order to do to you. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Mm. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Can we read it together? It said, therefore, whatsoever you want men to do to you, do also. Let me tell somebody, do also. Say, do also. Say, do also. People have come in urgent situation before. I call people in urgent situation. They answer me. So many people, they can't, you can't call them in urgent situation. They will deny you. They will, they will deny you. They will turn their face away from you. Then the day they need on them, they say, when everybody is, I used to do this one. You are lying. This life, this earth you are seeing, huh? Earth is a ground. Whatever you sow is what you reap. Can we celebrate Jesus? Do to other. What you want them to do to you? Celebrate others. Rejoice with others. Mourn with them. Go out of your way for others. Some of us, we can't go out of our way. That's why it's difficult for people to go out of their way for you. They can't go out of their way. I'm telling you. Number three. Forgive those that offend you is, is a commandment Jesus has given to you. If I even tie it to your prayer answer, forgive. Let me tell somebody, forgive. Mark 11, 25 and 26. Mark 11, 25 and 26. Forgive your offenders. And when you what? When you what? I'm not hearing you. Where you what? Uh -huh. If you have what? Okay. Forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. Let's, let's go to the next verse. But if what? Uh huh. Keep, keep the person in your heart. <sighs> this person? No. This is no problem. Have given us the benefits of the commandment. This is not the commandment. Number four, you must be genuinely born again. See, one leg in, one leg out will not give you any result. One leg in, one leg out. Communion service on Sunday, then be a parlor. Up on uh, Friday, no Friday night, one bottle. Then Sunday morning, communion. <laughs> you 
are joking. You have to be genuinely born again. Do you know that anybody that is genuinely born again in this world, they know. They know they are genuinely born again. John 3, 7. Hmm. I'm, I'm pulling from the words of Jesus. So if you have your Bible, you'll see that all of these things I'm saying, majority of them are in the red letters. Red letters direct from the mouth of Jesus. Do not marvel that I say to you, do not be surprised. Let me tell somebody, do not be surprised. Tell the person, say, do not be surprised that I say to you, you must be born again. There are many people in church, but many are outside of Christ. Many. There are many religious people. Very religious. They understand letters. In fact, they can even quote scripture. They will give you, they will tell you, no, 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 that's not the only place. Uh, they will quote it for you. But they are not in Christ. Number five. You are to remain in him and he in you. That's John chapter 15 verse 4 that we read. You are to remain in him. You are to abide in him. Let me tell somebody abide in him. Are you in Christ? People used to say that if you are not in Christ, you are in crisis. No peace. Number six. Matthew chapter five. Verse 14 and 16. Matthew 5, 14 and 16. Let your light shine before men. Let your light. Oh, say you are what? You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be eaten. You are born again. It's only you. You are the only one that says, I, me myself, I know I'm born again. Me myself, I know I am. I know I am serving God. I know. People must know. Let me tell somebody, people must know. People must know. Let your light shine before me. Don't be eating. Don't be eating. Don't be eating. Don't be eating. I'm serving God. Only you inside your room. Only you inside your bedroom. Nobody. You evangelism. No. Choir. No. This one. No. That one. No. Okay. Give. No. Don't be eating. You are the light. Let your light so shine. Among men. Thank you, Jesus. Number seven. Settle matter quickly with your enemies. Settle matter quickly with your enemies. Or settle matter quickly with your adversaries. Some of us will carry a load. Somebody offended you yesterday. You and your husband had issue yesterday. You did you carry it over. And you hear somebody has said something. That, you carry it is in your heart. Ah. Hmm. Matthew chapter 5, verse 25. Matthew 5, 25. Say too quickly with your adversary. Say, agree with your adversary quickly while you are on your way with him. Lest your adversary deliver you to the judge. Who is the judge? Do you know who is the judge? Huh? Who is the judge? Satan. Satan. A lot of people, do you know the reason why a lot of people's hands are, are, they are not getting results? Can I tell you why? Can I tell you why? It's not God though. God has released the answer. But because they don't know how to settle with their adversary very quickly, so therefore they hang on it. They hang on it. Settle, settle. You'll be free. Don't keep anybody in your heart. If I sit down like this, eh? if I sit down and I say I want to sleep, 
I'm telling you, it won't be up to one second. I'll sleep. I have been in a dream that I said I want to wake up. I was surprised and I, I stood up. So I'm standing up from here. And I stood up. It's not, it's not because of power. It's because of relationship and fellowship with God. So that you, you won't think ah, it's, it's me that you two are not powerful. It's not about power. It's about relationship. It's about where you are standing in God. Where do you stand in God? Number eight. Get rid of whatever that is making you sin. Get rid of whatever that is making you sin. Matthew chapter 5, 29 and 30. Matthew 5, 29 and 30. Get rid of whatsoever that is making you, causing you to sin. Look at it. If your right eye, your right eye, causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your own body to be cast into hell. What is this saying? What is this saying? There are some of our friends that whenever you are with them, you, you gossip. Why can't you cut them? Why? Cut off. Whenever you are with them, they make you feel like you want to drink. You want to drink a, a drink. Cut off. They make you feel like you are not even achieving anything in life. It's cut off. If your eye and that's the truth. Thirty. Thirty. Verse 30. And if your hand causes you to sin, Cut it off and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your own body to be cast into the sea. Your hand, your hand. He's not talking about this physical hand. And if it is this physical hand, <laughs> you know what to do. May the Lord help our understanding in Jesus' name. Number nine, do not swear at all. Come on, say, do not swear at all. Uh, you want to prove a point. Don't prove a point. There's no need for you to swear. Matthew 5, 34 to 37. Do not swear at all. Matthew 5, 34. Right? Say, but I say to you, do not swear. Swear at all. Is it the same way I say it? Do not what? Uh, I swear. I swear by heaven. I swear by this. I swear by that. Do not swear at all. Do not swear at all. Do not swear. Neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. Now, if you read, he said, nor by earth, for it is God's footstool, nor by Jerusalem. Right? For it is the city of the great king. 36. Nor shall you swear by your head. By your head. Ah. <laughs> Do not, because you cannot make one air, white or black. 37. Seven, but let your yes be yes. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I did it. I did it. Simple. Let's go. Move on. May the Lord have mercy on us. Number ten. Do not resist. Do not resist an evil person. If somebody is evil, don't resist. Don't resist. Matthew 5, 38 to 39. Do not resist an evil person. Now we read it together. If you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, verse 39. But I tell you, but I tell you what? Not to what? Not to what? Okay? But whosoever what? Do not resist. What they are saying there, you know, some of us don't understand what it means. I say, ah, somebody will now slap me. Jesus is saying that they, so <laughs> don't put your ear down where they will slap it. Don't even, don't even, 
Do you know what it means? Do you know what it means not to, to rest, not to resist? Meaning that if you know that this person's intention is going to lead to fight, don't try to wrestle. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Don't wrestle. Don't cause unnecessary tension that will make somebody to slap you or to beat you or to start fighting you. It's not every argument you must win. Don't prove any point. Let me tell somebody, don't prove any point. Uh, don't prove any point. Matthew chapter 5, verse 40 to 42. Hmm. Matthew 5, 40 to 42. Can we read it? If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. Verse 41. Whosoever compare you to go what? One mile, go with him what? Two. All right, go ahead. Give. Oh my God. Give to him who ask you and from him who want to borrow from you. Do not turn. Uh, what they say you should give, you turn away. Give more than is demanded. That's what he said. He said, Go extra mile. See, you are sowing a seed, though. As I'm talking to you now, I'm sowing seed to your life. So it depends on how your art is. There are some of us, our art is not a group grand. So the enemy will just come carry it. But tonight, God will, God will not allow it to happen. This word will make a change in our life. Because the word of God is powerful. Give. Number 12. Love your enemies. I didn't say love your enemy. Love your enemies. All of them. All of everybody you have. You have enemy now, right? Don't you have enemies? Don't you have people that hate you? Jesus said you should love them. Matthew 5, verse 43 to 40, 45. Love your enemies. You see it? You have heard that it was said, you shall love your enemy and eat and eat your enemy. Sorry, you shall love your neighbor and eat your enemy. But Jesus said, take it. He said, but I say to you, say, but I say to you, Okay, love your enemies. Okay, let's let's begin to see what how can you love your enemy? Number one, bless those that cause you. Right? Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you. And also what? Who persecute you. That's how I'll be winning my battle. Praise the Lord. On Sunday, we are talking about. God's love language. The benefits. Yes. Right. Number 13. Give to please God, not to be seen. Give to please God, not to be seen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Give to please God, not to be seen. Take it that you do not do your charity deed before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your father in heaven. You are giving something to a everybody is aware. You want to assist a everybody is aware. You know, people used to do it a lot. Yeah. Everybody is aware you want to give. No. Stop it. It's all right. 14. Pray privately not to be seen by men. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 to 7. Pray privately. Meaning that it's not all your prayer point that people should know. You know, like the other witness people assume that when, you, when we are doing our corporate prayer, we are praying for people to see us. No. God permits corporate prayer. He said, whatsoever two of you shall agree together, touching anything, I will do it. So is it that 
we are, you are here now, then we are praying. Are we doing so traveling? Huh? Are we doing so traveling? No, we need to mention our prayer and just pray together as a team. He said, one we chase a thousand, two, ten thousand. Praise the Lord. Because of time, my time is up, so I will just give us two more. Then we can ask questions. Number 15. Fast without form fair. Matthew 6, 16. Fast without form fair. A lot of people, the way they fast, eh? Ha. They will not blush. They will not dress well. They will not. Everybody is aware that they are fasting. They will look so agad. Eh? In fact, they will even be walking like a person that is fasting. You ask them, what is the matter? Don't be just prayer. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, you can check it on Matthew 6, 16. Then the last one I will stop today is uh, do not store up treasures on earth. Jesus really warned us. Don't, store, don't use all your savings on, on this earth alone. Things of the earth. You want to buy clothes. You want to use the best of clothes. You want to do not store up treasures on earth. Matthew 6 from 19 to 21. Maybe next week we'll continue from there. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Do not store up treasure. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rot destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Verse 20. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Right? Where neither moth nor rot destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. Right? 21. 21. For where your treasure, right? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Praise the Lord. Everything that I've ever made in my life that is substantial is in the kingdom. So you can't tell me I won't make it. Why? When I know what my mates are chasing. So where is your treasure? One of my one of my mentors was saying sharing with us last week that during COVID-19, a pastor, you know, the person that was guiding the church left and uh, they were looking for who is going to come and you know guide the church. And he called the member that ah, let's come and guide the church, this and that. No member for that to come. So he was there after some time, he decided to sell off all the things. Why? Because, do you know the reason? Because he actually borrowed money to buy those things. The chair, the equipment, and all, the, all of those things. So he said, if for instance, the members of that church were the one that have brought out the money to do those things, they will come and protect it. It's because they did, their treasure was not there. So where your treasure is not, you, you just look at it as it's not necessary. Are you getting what I'm saying? So lay up treasure for things in heaven. Lay up all the people that used to, you know, you know, rushing, you know, just to acquire the things of this world. Some years back, they have left all of those things today. Squander them now. I will rise from it. All those who ask God for mercy tonight. I tell him, Lord, teach me. Give me grace to follow you to the end. There are people who they started with us very well this year. January, they were hot for Christ. They were there when we, when we, please, please, can you just lower that thing? They were here when we were having 50 days of fasting and prayer. They were there when we were doing, you know, they were there, they started work. But they are fall by the wayside. We can find them again. Go ahead and open your mouth and say, Father, help me to the end. Help me to the end. Help me to the end. To the end. Go ahead and talk to God. Let your message speak for me. Pray for all our brothers. We pray for all our members. Father, 
They, they ask to love you. They have to keep 